We welcome to the show, Frida Payne. Hi, Frida. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Chris. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. So you're on the Soulicious tour then? Yes, I am, and having a ball. Band of Gold was a monster hit for you here in the UK, reaching mm-hmm. number one in 1970. Mm-hmm. Did you know how big it would be at the time? It was, um, when it was first released, um, I kind of felt that it might have been, it, it may have had a chance. When I first started seeing it charting, I kind of got an inkling that it was it was going to be the one. I didn't know how big it was going to I didn't know it was going to be that big, but, uh, yeah, I had a feeling it was going to be a, a hit. But I didn't know how big of a hit it was, it was going to become. I suppose you never know, really, do you? Even if you think a song is great, you never know for sure, do you? No. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, um, when I was recording it, I had no idea. I thought everything, I said, well, everything I did was good. You know, they all sounded good, and... And I, I had I, I didn't pick up on it being a hit when I first started doing it. How did you first get into music? Well, I st- my my parents, my mother started me taking uh, piano lessons when I was like about five or six years old, and um, and then from that point on, you know, I, I had piano for like about eight years privately and. And then as a result of that, I started to, like, buy, you know, buy song books like Rogers and Hart song books, you know, Cole Porter, stuff like that. And, and I would play and, te- and and learn some of the songs. And then uh, I started to enter talent contests uh, about the time I was, like, about 13 in, in and around Detroit and on television and all that. And that kind of, like, really kick-started my career off. Yeah, and I suppose once you won the talent contest, you thought, well, I can take this further. Yeah, because people uh, started encouraging me. I didn't, uh, let's say, I didn't take it upon myself to say, oh, I think I can sing. I'm going to try to make a career. No, people would say, you know, you're you're good. You're pretty good. You ought to pursue this. You ought to pursue this as a profession to do this professionally and you know earn a living like this and so I start thinking I said wow yeah hey you know I can uh, live the high life and travel all over the world and meet famous powerful people and wear meat coats and drink champagne (laughs) no I just thought that I could I could have a better life I just thought I could seek a better life um, being having been born and reared in Detroit and coming from um uh you know you know kind of ordinary comely background regular hard working people my my mother was a was a clerk and uh my father he worked uh, he was a factory worker worked at fords and and then then my stepfather uh he was a deputy sheriff uh policeman and then my parents later on uh they pulled their money together and they bought a, a business, a, a bar in Detroit. Did they listen to lots of different types of music? Kind of. Like in a way, uh, there was uh, there was jazz, there was like Duke Ellington, Count Basie, uh, there was some blues. And my, I had an uncle who played classical. He had classical records. And Rachmaninoff, Truskowski, you know Schubert, and and uh, and uh, so that's how I, I my my um, background really was like classical, especially studying piano. Um, they don't teach you how to play rock and roll and blues when you have piano lessons, and so that's how my background started out with that. And of course, like the records that were purchased by my let's say parents or my uncle was jazz and classical and some blues and that's and that was my background what jazz singers do you like then Ella Fitzgerald and uh Sarah Vaughan Karen McRae uh I liked Betty Bebop Carter Betty Carter um yeah that's about it and who would you say are your musical influences? 
Well, I would say Ella Fitzgerald. Well, all, I guess all the above, all the women I've mentioned, they are, they influenced me. What music do you listen to now? Oh, boy. Well, I kind of like this new singer, Adele. And uh, I like, I, I'll put it this way, I'm, I, I like Lady Gaga, but I like her only when she sings uh, torch songs. Like when she'll when she she'll burst out into doing, uh, like for instance, she did the duet with Tony Bennett, and she sings "Lady Is a Tramp." I uh, I just love that. Uh, Amy Winehouse had a well, she had a wonderful voice, a great sound when she did good song. You know, like I said, I'm oh oh. I also I was a fan. I liked uh, I liked to listen to Whitney Houston, Celine Dion. You're currently on Cliff Richard's Soulicious Tour. How's it going? It's going fantastic. It's going better than expected. Oh, that's good to hear. And um, so you're pretty much all over the UK, aren't you? Pretty much. Pretty much. I wish it were a longer uh, because it's so good. The show itself is so good and so terrific. I just wish that we were going to, I wish it was going to be twice as long as it is. Well, maybe you can do it next year. You never know. Yeah, you know, if this, if this, if the one is so is successful and the word of mouth gets out, we probably could. Soulicious too. Yeah, soulicious too. Right. Are you planning on making a new album soon? Well, I hope to be making a new album soon, probably by next year. I do have uh, some singles out right now. I have one song called "Free Me from My Freedom." which is on iTunes, and I have another one uh, that's getting, I think, getting some airplay as well now. It's called uh, He Gained the World But Lost His Soul. And what's that song about? It's about um, a person, could be man or woman, but a guy who who um, was in more or less, you know, living the, the the sanctified life, the Christian life, and and then he decided to go and started singing, you know, rock and roll, you know, hardcore rock and roll, uh, you know, about drugs and women and all that and sex and all that kind of stuff. And he became famous, but then again, he lost his soul. Like that, that was the whole thing. He gained the world, but he lost his soul. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And and drugs and all that. And then he got into drugs and all that kind of stuff. And he thought, well, m- maybe I was better off where I was. Yeah, yeah. So what's it like to work with so many great singers? Well, it's wonderful. It's fun. It's a mutual admiration society, so to speak. And the thing, the fun part is that, like, when we're going through the rehearsal process, we were here at a place, we were in a, uh, a place here in England called Wakefield, Wakefield, England, and we were at a rehearsal facility there, and just for the four days, five days of rehearsal, I enjoyed just sitting and and watching and listening to everybody else rehearse because everybody, I mean, the material they're doing is so good, and the songs are so good, and uh, just to see it happening, you know, it was just a th- it was just a thrill. So I'm enjoying working with the like Percy Sledge, James Ingram, and um, uh, Jackie Graham, and Billy Davis and Marilyn McCoo, and Lamont Dozier. We're having such a good time. It's like we all feel that it's um, it, 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 we're, we're all in the right place at the right time and, and that, uh, you know, God brought us together. That's how we feel. It's a terrific atmosphere. Who are your favorite soul singers? Well, first of all, and this has been going on for years, I'm going way back now, but Aretha Franklin is one of my favorite soul singers. You can't really get better, can you? No. And she has remained that. I mean, she's been there as the queen of soul for many, many years. Yes, she's really stood the test of time, hasn't she? Yes, she has. She has stood the test of time. And there's so many good singers. I mean, there's the late Phyllis Hyman was one of one of was a singer that I really liked. I liked her a lot. 
And, of course, um, there's Nancy Wilson as a jazz singer. You, but you did say soul, so I'm crossing the line again. That's all right. You can cross the line. We like all different types of music on my show. What else have you been up to? Well, I am also, like I said, I do my, I do it. I've been doing the last several years, I've been doing tribute to uh, the great jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald. And uh, and then I started doing some Lena Horn. Lena Horn passed away a year and a half ago, and and I also do a, a tribute to her as well. So and then I do my stuff myself, my my uh, material as well. So that's what I'm working on. So when do you reckon you'll have a new album out? Maybe you know a new album could be out next year. I suppose it's all about the right songs. The right songs. Yeah, get the right songs. Uh, of course, I'd probably do something kind of like almost like like save you know on on the order of saving a life. Uh, I cause see I I span I can span both uh, ends of the spectrum. I can go from jazz to pop to pop R and B. You know, mix it up a little bit. That's a great thing to be able to do as a singer, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because there's lots of singers where they can only sing one style of music. And some singers are very successful sticking with their style. That's If that's where they make their money and that's where uh, it's at for them and it's happening, then they should, by all means, stick to it. But I, the thing with me is that I've been able to explore and, and do other, you know, other kinds of music. And, and to me, that's what, that's what longevity is about, is being able to... Uh, kind of like almost reinvent yourself sometimes thanks a lot for coming on the show Frida it's been uh, really nice talking to you you're welcome thank you